By the way Veluza moves at the damn speed of light in the overworld, you'd think it's the fastest thing around. That's definitely not the case, as it has a sad base 70 speed, but a decent 102 attack. Where it's able to shine, however, is with its signature move, Filet Away. Dude literally slices itself up and is able to double its attack and speed stats at the cost of half of its HP. This is paired with a great ability in Sharpness. This gives a 50% boost to any slicing moves, and luckily it has two stab options with Aqua Cutter and Psycho Cut, both of which have an increased crit chance, which is super nice. If it gets the opportunity to somehow set up, this thing's actually kind of crazy. Look, Veluza is a fish that is willing to cut itself up for the love of the offense, and if that isn't the most intimidating thing ever, I don't know what is. Veluza, it's also just a very underrated Pokemon, and I feel like people just don't put enough respect on this thing's name. So if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into the match. So my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Milotic. That is actually perfect for me because I decided to lead off with the Hisuian Electrode. I got my wooden balls out rolling around. Call me George Washington. At this point, I can go for a Choice Specs Volt Switch. Now, I don't imagine that this thing wants to stay in. If it does, I'm going to absolutely zap the hell out of him. But of course, uh, they are going to switch here and that's going to give me a little bit of momentum on bringing in a matchup on whatever. So it turns out they're going to go into Executor here. This is kind of, this is a Pokemon that definitely hard walls my electrode. Uh, I get the volt switch off to do a little bit of chip here and now I can figure out what I want to go into. So the problem with Executor is that I don't really know what this thing wants to do. It's not a sun team so it's not likely going to be a sweeper. I end up deciding to go into the Mimikyu. Now the reason for this is because I can threaten this thing out with the threat of you know a Shadow Claw. It's going to likely draw in an Incineroar but after an Intimidate I get myself a nice little Swords Dance. So they do decide to go into Incineroar here. And as long as Mimikyu has this thing's disguise up, Peekaboo is an absolute threat. So I get that free Swords Dance. It brings me to plus one after the Intimidate here. And I know that a play rough should be a two hit KO, unless this thing is like some type of crazy defensive Incineroar. It is actually going to be exactly a two hit KO, but they decide uh, to, instead of attacking, just go for the U-turn there, which is a good play because not only does it break my disguise, absolutely snaps my damn neck, and uh, it is also going to switch them out to be able to come in you know, and intimidate later. So they decide to pivot into old shield face over here, and this thing is actually also a pretty big problem to the Mimikyu, at least once my, uh, you know, my, my disguise is broken, which I'm over here with my broken neck not looking so hot, but I just decide to go for the Shadow Claw. It's still going to do a decent chunk of damage, um, but they actually decide to go ahead and commit the Terra here. They're going to go into Terra Water, uh, as a defensive typing for the Bastiodon, which um, is honestly fine by me. I like to see people getting their Terras out of the way early. I do at least go for that Shadow Claw, and yeah, it's not going to do you know, pretty much anything. Bastiodon is extremely defensive, and I probably should have waited to set up the Mimikyu. I had an option to go into Passimian versus uh, the Executor and go for that U-turn. However, at this point, they just decide to set up the Stealth Rock here, and at least I'm sitting at full HP, and I really do just kind of need some type of chip on this Bastiodon to take it out. The good news is, however, going for that Terra Water actually makes it a little bit easier for me to deal with, considering I do have the Electrode in the back. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna save the, the Mimikyu for later. I have potential, you know, with Shadow Sneaks. I have Play Rough for being able to check the Raging Bolt. I decide to bring in the Veluza and they just straight up yell at me and we just absolutely crumble under the pressure and get switched the hell out. Veluza does not enjoy being yelled at. Uh, the good news is, though, they actually end up dragging in the Electrode, and this is perfect. This could not have been better. I wanted to get this thing in, uh, but it's just risky to hard switch you know, the Hisuian Electrode in on pretty much anything. So, at this point, uh, I can definitely knock this thing out with the threat of like a Thunderbolt or a Leaf Storm. I just decide to go for the Bolt Switch because I know for sure they're definitely not staying in here. And this team has the intentional dynamic of the kind of fast pivots, you know, with the Electrode having the Bolt Switch. I also have the Choice Scarf Passimian with the U-Turn. So the Volt Turn is here to try to get me a position to set up Veluza or potentially mimic you. So they go into the Raging Bolt. This thing is an absolute threat and it is a very scary Pokemon. Now I do have a plan for this. I decide to go into the Regirock. Young Age Face comes in and we take some Stealth Rock chip. I feel like this Mon should be exempt from that because I literally am a fucking Stealth Rock myself. But uh, they go for the Thunderbolt here as I set up my Stealth Rock. Now. 
the amount of damage they did there is extremely important and also extremely disappointing because my plan was to be able to take one of those thunderbolts leaving me in low enough hp to activate my uh, custat berry it does not it does just a few hp to less and this is one of the few times i wish they would have just done more damage to me in a pokemon game because Without my Custat Berry activating, I cannot explode, and that was actually wildly unfortunate that that does not kill me there, so I kind of just waste the Regirock for no reason, and an explosion on this thing would have been super clutch. Alright, so that does not quite happen. However, at least I can now go into Tauros. I can go for the Earthquake here, I'm thinking with a Life Orb, maybe it knocks this thing out, but the Raging Bolt is too damn bulky, bro. We don't get the benefit of the Sheer Force there. Uh, however, that does allow them to fire off the Thunderbolt, and that takes care of the Tauros. So I'm just out here dropping like flies, and Raging Bolt is just such an incredible monster, especially against a team of damn misfits like I usually have. However, I do also have a plan B, and that is with the boy Sharpoon over here. I'm going to bring in the Veluza, and the reason why we have a decent matchup against this is because of Substitute. I know that they're going to go for the Thunderclap, which is essentially a special attacking electric sucker punch, and going for the Substitute is going to make me... And nice and protected against the priority there. So I get the sub up for free, uh, which allows me a position here to go for the fillet away. Behind the substitute, I have just enough HP to slice my shit up into pieces. Now, the fun part about Veluza is first, he slices himself up, and then he slices you up. So I go for that fillet away, it doubles my attack and my speed at the cost of losing half of my health, which does bring me down to two HP, but gives me a little bit of a snack here with the citrus berry, just so I'm not chilling. Uh, on my last damn breath over here. Now, they do go for the Thunderbolt here, and that is going to be able to obviously break the Substitute, but now we find ourselves in a unique position where obviously they have the Thunderclap. If I attack, I die. But the good news is the Citrus Berry brought me exactly to the point where I can go for one more Substitute predicting that Thunderclap. Uh, and luckily, the Citrus Berry came in extremely clutch. They do go for the move we expect, and the sub brings me right back down to 2 HP. This thing is just chilling on an inch of his life, and uh, we do get the sub up, which is absolutely amazing. Now, they could have the option to go for the Thunderclap there to at least knock out my substitute, but then they do end up losing, you know, the, the huge threat in the Raging Bolt. But they decide now to switch into Incineroar for the Intimidate. Luckily for us, however, Intimidate does not work through the substitute because... This beanbag is not afraid of shit. Uh, I do at least now have the opportunity to outspeed, go for that Aqua Cutter, and the Incineroar is taken care of. So that's a huge threat out of the way. Also, we do still have our substitute intact, and Veluza is in a fantastic position here. So now they can go into Bastiodon, and this thing is, of course, a defensive freaking beast over here. And with the water type, I'm forced to go for the Psycho Cut, which is fine. Uh, I get the Stab Psycho Cut off here, and with that plus two attack, that does take care of Bastiodon with a critical hit. Another fun dynamic with the Sharpfish is the fact that both of his uh, kind of stab moves here are high critical hit chances. Luckily, that does allow us to take care of the Bastiodon, and we are still behind the substitute absolutely chilling. So we're breaking holes in the team over here, and now they decide to go into the Palm Tree. So they see my entire moveset at this point and realize uh, that they are going to be able to resist both of them. So I'm still relatively fine with this, just being behind the substitute. But also I notice that Aqua Cutter has a decent chance to potentially knock this thing out if I go for the Terra Water. So, you know, I'm going full offensive fish today. I decide to go for the Terra Water of my own. And that is going to boost the Aqua Cutter to the point where it'll definitely knock this thing out if I roll for the high crit chance. Um, but we're going to go ahead and cut up some coconuts here, have ourselves... A nice little little drink behind the substitute. Unfortunately, however, it does barely hang on. It lives it in red, but also that is going to activate this thing's citrus berry, which you know brings it to a point where obviously the next aqua cutter does kill it, um, and it does allow them to finally break the substitute, you know, with the giga drain. So I'm feeling like I'm still in a pretty decent spot. However, without the substitute, now thunderclap from the raging bolt does kill me. I also feel like you know. As long as this Executor doesn't have any crazy shenanigans under his coconuts, we're probably going to at least be able to take it out. However, as it turns out, this thing does have some crazy bullshit under its sleeve. So, I go for the Protect, which obviously we can't be slicing through Protects out here. But more importantly, that is going to allow this thing to roll a chance for Harvest to activate. And it does, which gives him another Citrus Berry. And uh, he just pulls a Citrus Berry out of fucking thin air. And that is going to bring this thing to the point... Uh, where it's likely that it can potentially take another Aqua Cutter here. I do, of course, 
still outspeed because we're absolutely zooming. And the Aqua Cutter barely is not enough to knock this thing out. So listen, Defensive Executor with the Harvest and Protect play comes in extremely clutch, allows them to finish off the Veluza. Uh, honestly, not a huge deal for me, just because, again, I would have lost uh, the Veluza to the Raging Bolt regardless, but uh, well executed Executor, and I'm all here, I'm here for it. So. We have ourselves an extremely close match at this point, and now we gotta try to see what we can do with the resources we have left. So, I decide to bring back in the Passimian here, of course, I can outspeed. I decide to just go for the U-turn here, it's definitely, obviously gonna knock out the Executor. I don't imagine they conserve this thing, uh, but it's good to be able to kind of just tuck the Passimian back uh, into the bag and be able to save this thing for later. With the Choice Scarf, it is gonna be pretty useful. Uh, I also do have, like, Earthquake for the Raging Bolt. Uh, and at this point, I just decide to go into Mimikyu. The bad news about killing something with a U-turn is, of course, I send out my Pokemon, and now they get to make a decision on what they bring in next. So, I'm over here just chilling by myself, having a little party of one over here with my leftovers. While my disguise is still broken, I am at full HP, and that makes me feel pretty confident uh, that I can, I can definitely take attacks from, you know, whatever they have left. So... One of the problems is that they still have this damn Milotic from the start that we have not gotten any chip on, um, but I still at least have been conserving the Electrode for this. So I decide to go for the Play Rough, actually end up rolling for a nice little critical hit. However, they have Scald and they also get a burn. So it freaking cancels out at this point. Mimikyu is not going to be extremely useful for me. So while they have taken away access to Scald from most Pokemon for whatever reason, this friggin' sea snake over here does still get the ability to generate hot water and always get the ability to freaking burn me. But now at this point I'm realizing they probably just click Scald again, and this does allow me an opportunity to get in the Electrode for free. So I bring in Triangle, and uh, who is clearly a Triangle, and obviously unless they click Ice Beam here I'm gonna be in a good spot where they do go for the Scald. It, it does in fact hurt me quite a bit, but they don't burn, they don't burn stuff when it doesn't matter, obviously. Electrode would not care, but I can now go for the Leaf Storm, and that is going to take care of my Lotic. We also get another critical hit, just to throw some salt in the old wound over there, and we've gotten them down to two Pokemon left. The problem is, the two Pokemon they have left are definitely the scariest. They have the Raging Bolt, who we do have some solid chip on, and plus with the Stealth Rock, it puts it into red, but the final hidden Pokemon is going to be Great Tusk. Now, I decide to leave Electrode in here, because I figure even at minus two, a Specs Leaf Storm does take this thing out. Uh, they do not Thunderclap because they likely don't see a kill there, and that takes care of it. And now, the final Pokemon is going to be uh, one of the scariest, which is the Great Tusk. However, I've been conserving the Electrode uh, perfectly at this point, to where as long as this thing does not get speed boosts, I should be able to outspeed, switch back in, and kill it. And one way I want to try to block the speed boosting is by going into the Mimikyu, who obviously being Ghost-type, you cannot Rapid Spin on. So... This Mimikyu is disguiseless and exposed, however they do go for that rapid spin as they know that their win condition is going to be trying to outspeed Hisuian Electrode, which is definitely a tough feat in itself because I think it's quick as hell. But, uh, we block the rapid spin and this Mimikyu is just like, please kill me, for, for Christ's sake, I'm over here just... My neck hurts, I'm, I'm burnt, I'm just having a rough time. I can at least now go for the play rough and finish it off. I also have the Electrode in the back to just come in and blast him with a Chloroblast. But they're just going to go ahead and run because the game is lost. And that is going to be the end of it. So I thought that was just a super fun game. There was some fun strategy shown off. Shout out to my opponent for making it a good one. And thank you guys very much for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like on the video. It really does help out the channel. And I'll catch you guys next time.